Hey there, welcome to Mike's Collection, episode 217. Um, I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is a brand new item. Um, it just arrived in the mail for me about two hours ago. Um, it showed up while I was working today, and I've eagerly been anticipating getting off work so I could come downstairs uh, and open this box up and show you guys the figure. So, if you watch my videos regularly, um, I've talked about this video uh, a couple of weeks ago when I first pre-ordered it. And uh, yeah, it's a very quick turnaround. Much, uh, much quicker than I'm used to. The way toys tend to work nowadays is, uh, you know, the new figures will get announced usually at some sort of like San Diego Comic Con or New York Comic Con or something. And once the figures get announced, then they go up for pre-order. You put it up for pre-order. It takes several months and then the figure eventually shows up. Once it uh, shows up online, I buy a lot of my toys from Big Bad Toy Store. So once it shows up, it goes into my pile of loot. I usually let a couple of toys pile up in my pile of loot to kind of bundle some shipping. And then it takes me three to four weeks off usually to, uh, to get the toys. So it's a long process. Um, a lot of the toys I buy from Super 7 and uh, the Four Horsemen are made to order. So they put up a figure, kind of like Kickstarter style, and they say, you know, who wants these? You commit to buying it, and then they go into production, and that could take two years sometimes. So uh, I usually know what toys I'm going to get well in advance before I have them in my hands. Anyway, what I talked about a couple of videos ago was that one day I got an email from Four Horsemen Studios, which is a toy design, toy design studio, that they had a figure that was going up for sale. I, I think they gave you maybe 24 hours notice, like this figure is going up for sale tomorrow, and we expect to deliver it before Halloween. And this was like the last week of September or so when this went up for order. So that's like, we're just announcing this figure now at the end of September, and you're going to have it in your hands before the end of October. That is a, that's a big surprise. That's, you don't often get surprises like that in the toy industry anymore. So I was pretty excited. I was caught a little off guard because I hadn't budgeted for this thing. And it was kind of an expensive figure. But anyway, uh, here it is. The reason they wanted to get it before Halloween is because it is kind of Halloween themed. This is the Headless Horseman from Four Horsemen Studios. Um, they're the company that makes the Mythic Legions line which is usually kind of like fantasy-based six-inch figures, things like knights and orcs and trolls and ogres and things like that. Um, this guy, I don't think he's necessarily labeled as a Mythic Legions figure, so he is kind of separate from their main line, but uh, he's definitely made using the same parts and the same style as Mythic Legions, so he can very easily be displayed and integrated into your Mythic Legions collection. So uh, they did a similar thing last year um, it was right before Christmas, and they announced that they were going to do a holiday-themed Krampus figure. And they said, this figure's going up. This is the one and only time we're going to be selling this figure. Once it, we sell out, it's gone. And because they had kind of secretly went into production on this figure before it had been announced, you know, they probably had to make, you know, somewhat conservative numbers because they didn't want to overproduce it and end up with too many. Usually when they do pre-orders, that gives them a... A way to gauge how many of a certain figure to make so they make let's just say 5,000 figures they put them up for pre-order if 10,000 people want them tough luck only 5,000 get them so you have to move fast and that Krampus figure did sell out very fast so I got the email about this thing the headless horseman going up for pre-order and I was like oh crap I definitely want this thing I'm gonna have to pre-order it and I did and a lot of people have had this in their hands for like two or three weeks already. Um, if you live in the States, uh, some of those initial orders were in people's hands like within days of placing their order. I'm in Canada. It takes a little bit longer. So uh, you may have already seen reviews of this thing on other channels. But uh, it just arrived for me. So brand new to me. So anyway, very cool box with that Headless Horseman on the front. Uh, not much on the side of the box. You get a close-up shot of the flaming pumpkin there with a bit of a bio, I guess. I haven't actually read this yet. And then on the back, you get a cool full-body painting of the horseman and his horse. And nothing really on the bottom. Nothing really on the top. Now, uh, this here 
This is actually held on with magnets. So this front sleeve actually comes off of the box like so. You don't actually have to cut any tape or you know rip anything. It just comes right off. And inside, you get this kind of like diorama. So if you want to set this up on your shelf and display your horseman in front of it, that's pretty cool. So yeah, nice work there. And then uh, otherwise, you've already seen the back and the sides. The only thing that changes is now we have a big open window on the front. So you can see, sorry about the glare here. It's a little tough for me to see what I'm doing. So you've got the uh, headless horseman there with a couple of swappable heads. And then of course you have his horse, which I don't know if his horse has a name or not. Um, but you know what? I'm going to take a break on the video here for a second so I can get this guy all opened up and we will take a look at him outside of the packaging. And before I join you again, I'm going to read the bio on the side of the box and maybe that will tell me if the horse actually has a name or not. But anyway, I wanted to see the box because it is pretty nice. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, great stuff. I'm really excited about it. And, you know, I can't believe that, you know, a month ago I didn't even know this thing existed or was coming. And now here it is in my hands. Really cool. It's kind of, it's, it's nice to be surprised like that. My bank account wasn't thrilled about it, but, I, but I was. All right. So let's, uh, let's, you know, get this thing opened up. I just wanted to quickly mention as I open the box here that there is this cardboard insert. So this serves as basically a second diorama background. If you prefer to display your headless horseman in the daytime, I don't know why you would, but I guess that's an option. And here's just a quick look at the figure still sort of in the packaging. I haven't quite, you know, done all the twist ties and pulled him out of the packaging, but there's just a quick look at him in his tray. So here is the headless horseman and his horse outside of the packaging. As far as I know, by the way, the horse does not have a name. Um, there definitely wasn't one on the packaging of this figure. And I actually just did a quick search through Wikipedia as well. I don't see any name associated with the horse. So there you go. Um, pretty cool. Now, to be honest, there's not a ton of accessories in here. There's quite a few, but it's not like overwhelming. And I think he's pretty much got everything he needs. Um, of course, we've got the horseman himself. He looks great. Um, he's got an additional pumpkin accessory. He's got a sword for chopping off heads. Um, he's got, so the horse has an accessory here in that he has this additional mane. So you see with this mane here, it's kind of resting you know, comfortably on the back of his neck. You can take that off and put this mane on so it looks like he's running and, uh, you know, kind of a windblown mane. So we might try and switch that out a little bit later. This here is the horseman's soft good cape. And then he's got this little stump, which is what you can put in his neck hole if you don't want to display him with a pumpkin. If you actually want to display him as headless, you know, they don't just leave a black void there. They've actually got this, you know, neck with a grody little like spine and some muscle tissue there. So you can plug that in there, which is pretty cool. And then some additional hands. So the hands that he currently has, he, he came like this. So he's got a gripping hand there and a little bit more of an open gripping hand there. So the additional hands that he came with is kind of the open style gripping hand for the other side and the kind of the tighter gripping hand. I imagine that you use that for the sword for his, uh, his right hand. And then he's also got a kind of another gripping hand. Looks pretty similar to the one he's got. I imagine there's probably some difference here, but it's another, I thought it was a closed fist at first, but it's not quite, it's still uh, got a bit of a grip on it. And then this last one, so it's an open hand, but you'll see it's got this weird ball joint thing attached to it. So you might be wondering like, what's that all about? Well, the reason for that is that if you want him holding these jack-o'-lanterns, this peg here is just like the neck peg. So you plug that into his, into the neck like that. And that way, when he's holding the pumpkin, you don't have to worry about it being too heavy and falling out of his hand or anything. It balances in there. I didn't push it in all the way. I'm sure if I did, it would probably fit even more snugly in his hand. But uh, that's pretty cool because uh, I'm sure a lot of people will want to display him getting ready to throw the pumpkin. And if they just gave you a standard, 
you know, open palmed hand, people would have to like rest the jack o' lantern on it. It would probably be tumbling all over the place. So that's really cool that they gave us this hand with the uh, the neck peg right in there. Now it looks like that net neck peg is permanently attached. It would almost be kind of nice if they gave us an open palm without this as well. But uh, anyway, that's what we got. So where to start? Where to start? Oh, well, here's a closer look at the sword as well. Nothing particularly special about this. It's pretty straightforward. It's still a very nice looking sword. I like that the paintwork they have in here. And it's got multiple different tones. So you get the silver blade, the gray kind of on the hilt with the black handle. Looks very good. So maybe let's start with the horseman himself. So you see here he's got a jack-o'-lantern head. So it's, uh, you know, very cool. And, you know, there's nothing on the back of that head there. So you can display him standard jack-o'-lantern. Now, if you want to go flaming jack-o'-lantern, as I showed you, this one here has the peg, so you can place that on his head as well. Now, I haven't done this yet, but my understanding is this flame effect is optional. Um, I'm not sure I want to mess with it too much. Yeah, it feels like it can be removed there. Maybe I'll do that off camera because I don't want to risk breaking it. But I think the flame can be removed and there's a hole. You can kind of see it there a little bit. There's a hole in the back of the head. So you could take that out if you wanted to. Seems I'm not sure if these flames plug out of the eyes or not. Again, I'm not going to really try that right now because I don't want to risk breaking it. But I do like the idea of the flaming head. I'm not sure which one of these I'll go with. Um, they're both cool. Now, one thing I just want to quickly mention is, so when I ordered this figure, like almost a month ago now, or about three weeks ago, it got me excited. And I was like, you know what? I want to go back and revisit the, uh, the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. So I went back and I watched Tim Burton's movie. Um, but I also went back and watched the old Disney cartoon um, that I haven't seen in several years, but I loved it as a kid. It really made a big impression on me which is partly why I kind of needed this figure. This was a must-buy for me. I saw that Disney Headless Horseman uh, flick so long ago when I was like a little child. It was really freaky compared to other Disney stuff. Now, one thing I'm learning, though, is, uh, you know, it was actually part of a movie called uh, Ichabod and Mr. Toad. The first half of the movie is all about Mr. Toad. The second half is about Ichabod Crane and the Headless Horseman. I don't think that's how I saw it. Uh, I think they used to pretty much always play a Disney Halloween special that had different clips of uh, various kind of Halloween themed uh, Disney cartoons, probably things with Mickey Mouse and Goofy and stuff. And the, the Ichabod Headless Horseman story was always included as part of that. And uh, so that's how I know it. And when I went back and rewatched it on Disney Plus the other day, I was thinking, I don't know if I've seen this in its entirety. I could be wrong. It's not It's not very long. I want to guess maybe 20 minutes or so for the Headless Horseman portion. But I feel that they might have even lopped, you know, five minutes of that off when they included it on the kind of compilation Halloween special when I was a kid. I could be wrong about that. It's been a long, long time since I watched it. But it was fun to revisit it. And I still think it holds up. It was a, It was a lot of fun. But one thing that kind of got me curious after watching those two things is uh, those are the two ways that I would know the Headless Horseman. Like, it's from that Disney cartoon. That's how I was introduced to the whole concept. And I've never read the original story. Uh, and then the Tim Burton you know, movie came out however many years ago that was, 20 years ago now. Um, and it got me thinking, I always think of the Headless Horseman as having a jack-o'-lantern for a head. Uh, flaming or otherwise but he doesn't do that in either of the anim not the animated movie nor the live action movie uh, he's always just straight up headless at one point he throws a jack-o-lantern um, and it got me thinking like why do I associate the jack-o-lantern on the headless horseman's head maybe there was a headless horseman in like an episode of Scooby-Doo or something and he did that um, I don't know but if you go to the Wikipedia page and read the the story they do refer to him as sometimes using a jack-o'-lantern in place of his head. Um, but I feel like I can picture the visual, but I don't know where I ever would have seen the visual if not in either of the two movies. I don't know. Maybe I've seen him on, uh, 
you know, just artwork on Halloween displays in shopping malls or something. Uh, like, I must have seen it somewhere for me to have such a strong association with him having a pumpkin head. But I can't for the life of me think of where I saw that. That's just a little sidebar. If you can think of where you would have first seen the Headless Horseman with a jack-o'-lantern on his head like this, uh, please let me know in the comments below because I'm really curious about it. Anyway, sorry about all that. So here you go. Very nice, nicely sculpted pumpkin. I love this look. Um, here's another quick little sidebar for you. But I used to create my own comic books when I was young. And... Uh, I had a comic book company with my brother that we called Incredible Comic Books, and we had our own kind of universe, the Incredible Universe, and we had a bunch of characters, and we, we would do these like 30-page comic books and color them in with colored pencil, and we'd do crossovers with my characters, would meet Doug's characters, and we'd have sometimes big multi-book crossovers and all that stuff. One of the characters I created was called the Headless Horseman, and he did have a jack-o'-lantern for a head, and he had a gray and black outfit. It was a little bit more superhero-y than this it was like kind of more of a you know spandex type outfit and he carried a big scythe um, rather than a sword um, but again you know when I created my own headless horseman character I went with the pumpkin iconography and again I just don't know where that came from but anyway um, so yeah this guy's got a very kind of like traditional looking outfit like it looks like it could be of that period I suppose and these pieces are reused from other Mythic Legions figures. Like I said, this guy isn't really branded as Mythic Legions, and he's not really... He doesn't seem like he would really fit into the world of Mythos that uh, the Mythic Legions characters are supposed to exist in. But he definitely could fit in because he has the same aesthetic. And regarding this outfit, like this... Uh, this looks like something that could come with... Uh, you know, like you can definitely see a medieval character wearing it. I happen to have got a figure earlier this year named, uh, I think this guy's name is Valak, and he is a vampire, like a vampire falconer, and he's an archer, so you can see he comes with his, uh, his bow and all that sort of stuff, but you'll notice his body is the exact same as the horseman's from the neck down. They've got the same buckles, same kind of buckles on the glove. You know, all those little rivets all over their jacket. You know, that's all directly the same. The belt there, you see the horseman's got the little pouch on the side. That is the same as Valak back here. So, yeah, completely reused, which is not unheard of in the toy industry. That's pretty common. Although, when they reuse parts, I usually like to see a little bit more mixing and matching, you know, rather than have a, almost a straight repaint of another figure I already have like maybe if they had used Valak's torso but maybe a different set of legs or a different set of arms however um this all comes together so perfectly like it's a really nice you know body that if they had tried to differentiate it just by uh giving him separate arms or separate legs just for the sake of differentiating him from Valak that might have hurt the figure so I think it looks good and I don't mind that it's basically a figure that I already bought earlier this year this year just with a different head uh, I think the sculpt works really well um, I don't know if I'm gonna bother getting into all the articulation and again with these kind of boutique figures we'll call them they can be a little uh, tight sometimes when you first get them out of the packaging and I usually advise you to take a hair dryer to the joints so that they don't potentially break although this is my first first time moving this guy right now like you're watching me pose him in real time his ankles seem to move nicely his knees move well so they're just uh like single jointed knees so he doesn't get that full range of motion like he can't kick his foot back and kick his own butt or anything but uh ball jointed shoulders they should come up pretty high he's got the single jointed elbow swivels at the wrist ball jointed head he's got a swivel at the waist and his legs can go out pretty far which they would have to so he can ride his horse and it's good that these uh there's this kind of a slit here in the soft goods so they don't hinder him. Sometimes characters with skirt pieces really hinder the movement of the legs, but he seems to move okay. Uh, the only real difference that I see with Valak is that he's got this collar with the little scarf on it. For all I know, Valak might actually have that, but it might be obscure because Valak has this kind of hood and cape piece, so I'm not entirely sure what his collar looks like. But anyway, you see on the back, 
He's got the same kind of holes that we see on all Mythic Legions figures. So you could plug in additional accessories. For example, I've got some Mythic Legions figures that have bat wings. So if I wanted to plug bat wings into him, I could. Um, if I wanted to give him like a backpack or something, I could do that. Um, like Valak here, you'll notice he's got these pauldrons that plug into the back of him. So if I wanted to put these big shoulder pads onto him, I could do that. So that's cool that it's got all the same, you know, interchangeable parts that the other figures do. Ah, uh, yeah, really cool. Um, why don't we try changing out the head here? Again, I'm going to do this delicately because I don't want to risk breaking anything. Okay, so that came off relatively easily. Now, this is new to me here, taking this part out because I've never done that on any other Mythic Legions. So I am going to take him off camera so I can make sure I handle that very delicately. And we'll see how quickly that happens. I might have to even take my hair dryer to it. I'll let you know if I do. Okay, so here he is with the decapitated stump. Um, it took a little bit of effort to get this piece out. But you can see it's just a, it's a pretty basic plug that's in there. So, you know, there should be no harm in just giving it a good strong tug. I don't think you're going to break anything, but... I would always recommend being careful. But yeah, it did take me a little while of kind of slowly turning it and getting its way out of there. Um, this piece here, like it also seems like it might be removable, this collar, this cuff here. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't know if you can see there's a peg in the back there. It looks like that probably just pops out of place. But again, I don't want to force it. I'm not sure if it's glued or not. So I'm not going to mess with it too much. But it does, it does sit kind of loose there. Um, you'll see I also changed out his hand and I put the jack-o'-lantern in there. So he seems to be holding it okay. Although I do have some concerns with how loose the wrist is. Um, I don't know if he has, if he can hold it up from every angle. It might be a little finicky because the wrist I don't, does sit a little loose in the socket, you see. And that's what I was afraid of is the pumpkin might be a little too top heavy and he'll end up holding it like that. But it might be a matter of I maybe just didn't put the push the hand in enough. Um, again, the hand came out relatively easily. Uh, it was a little worrisome that there is some paint flaking when I pulled his head off and when I pulled his hand off, there is some little black flecks of paint here on my desk. So yeah, be careful with that stuff. You don't want to damage anything. But uh, you know, there's no noticeable paint wear on any of the pieces or anything. All right, and uh, let's give him his sword in this hand. All right, so there you go. There is our headless horseman. Um, so his final accessory is the cape. So I haven't really looked at this yet myself, but it is got red on the inside, black on the outside. It's got a little metal chain there. And these clips here are metal as well. Now it's wired, I can tell that. And it looks like it's wired on all three sides, meaning so you can pose it so if you want to bend it like this and stuff it'll hold that shape so that's really cool so it should allow you to give them like lots of wind blown poses and things like that now i'm not sure how this goes on because i would have expected with all the other capes i've gotten mythic legions and i've got a few of them they usually are soft goods and they have holes in them and you match the holes up with the holes on the back and then you have to plug the pauldrons in through the hole on the soft goods so that it kind of holds them in place. This one here does not have any holes whatsoever. And judging by the shape, the size of this chain, I'm kind of thinking that you have to take that collar off. Eh, maybe not. Uh, there we go. But yeah, if you want to get the chain, say, underneath the tie or something, then yeah, I think you probably have to pop this collar off. But there, that just gives you a rough idea of how it looks. Um, so it looks pretty cool. I'm digging it. It'll probably take a little bit of messing around to get the perfect pose and get that cape sitting the way I want it to. And I probably will have to figure out how this collar comes off so I can have that chain. So I'm not even entirely sure, is that how it goes on? Does this chain just go underneath the tie and that's how it stays in place? Or is there a better way to attach it more firmly? I'm not entirely sure. 
Um, but anyway, let's move on to the horse for a second. So, if you've never seen one of these Mythic Legions horses, they really are phenomenal. Like, they're big, heavy figures. Um, this guy is pretty much all black, except he's got these red hooves. They almost look like they're, you know, flaming red, which makes sense because I believe the legend of this guy is that, you know, he basically comes out of a hell to hunt people down. So it would make sense that the hooves are maybe, you know, all fired up. Um, yeah, he, he looks great. The articulation on these guys is really good too. Um, I don't have enough room to really show you that well. So you see he's sculpted with his mouth open. It would be nice if his, maybe his mouth opened and closed, but whatever. But the head does go up and down and turns there. The neck has got a joint there, so you get some movement there. The legs, you can see articulation there, so you can get a pretty good range of movement on the legs. And then the knees, of course, move like so. And then there's some articulation on the hooves as well. You can see there's another joint there. Again, I don't want to mess with it too much on camera because I just opened this figure. He might be a little stiff. And it might be a little boring for you guys to watch me work out all these joints. The tail, you see that's articulated also. Goes up. So yeah, just really nice sculpting. Now, in the video I posted a couple of weeks ago, I said this, so this might sound a little bit repetitive, but I do just want to reiterate. As much as these are fantastically sculpted and painted figures, I really did not want to buy another one of these Mythic Legion's horses. They take up a lot of room and I'm just not really a horse guy. Um, and besides my Mythic Legion's horses, I also have some Masters of the Universe Classics horses. And, you know, I've got Stridor from Masters of the Universe Origins. Uh, you know, I'm starting to accumulate a lot of horses in my collection and they're big. I don't mind getting, you know, dogs and birds and things like that. But horses, they tend to add, not only they take up a lot of room, but they add a lot of cost to the figures. Um, however, with this being the headless horseman, you kind of need the horse, I think. Um, I'm, I think I'm glad that they gave, didn't give me an option to buy them separately. Because if they had said just buy the figure for 50 bucks or buy the whole set for 100 um, I don't know. I might have been tempted to just go with the figure. Um, but yeah, you kind of need the horse. So I'm kind of glad that I just kind of had to pull the trigger. Um, in the past, they have never made you buy the horses. Um, they always kind of come as an option. So for example, I have two of the Mythic Legion's horses and you can buy them in a two pack with their rider, or you can buy the horse and rider separately. Um, However, in those two instances, I chose to buy the horses because I thought they felt like a complete set together. But they've since released a couple of more horsemen, and I have vowed not to buy any more of them just because of the, the cost and the, the room they take up. But uh, I do just want to bring in one of the other horses that I have here. I think this guy's name is Atheon or something. I forget. But you see, this guy here is a demonic horse. So he shares a lot of the same parts. Except he's got these big horns and he's got a much kind of freakier paint job. But his mane, you'll notice, he's got the windblown mane. And that is the same piece that I have here. So I don't think I'm going to bother swapping this out on the horse right now. But that gives you an idea of what it will look like. Um, one thing that always kind of bothered me about this horse, as incredible as it looks, I always thought for a horse from hell... The tackle here, the saddle, it all seemed a little too traditional. Like, would a demon really have this, like, leather etching and a, a rolled up, I don't know, what is that, a sleeping bag or something? It just seemed a little silly. I understand the horseman didn't want to sculpt a whole new saddle when they already had one for an existing, more standard horse. But I always thought it looked a little weird on this guy. But it actually works pretty well with this horse. Because even though he's a horse from hell, he is supposed to be... A traditional horse you know from what what period is it the 1800s i don't know but uh yeah it looks cool it works um you know this he's mostly solid black but his, his mane and around his feet he's got this nice wash on there to bring out a little bit of color same as here it's it's a little it's off 
I don't know if I'd say it's gray. It almost has like a purpley color to it. But yeah, there's enough, enough color within the black to kind of break things up there. It's a nice sculpted detail and everything like that. So again, really nice. So why don't we get the horseman up there and see how that looks. So here is the horseman mounted on his steed. And so he looks pretty cool up there. You can see I've got his feet in the stirrups of the horse. They fit in there nicely. Uh, he's holding the reins there, although I gave him his kind of pretty loose grip hand. Uh, he'd probably be better suited to have a tighter grip to hold the reins. But yeah, he looks pretty great. Um, the horse, I could probably find a more dynamic pose to display the horse. But uh, again, the more you kick his legs out, the more room he's going to take up on a shelf. But anyway, yeah, I think he looks awesome. And if you're curious how the horseman would look on an even more demonic horse, here he is riding Atheon. And he looks pretty great on there too. The third horse I have from Mythic Legions is actually a vampire horse. And that would probably also look really cool with this figure. So lots of great options there. Okay, so my final thoughts on this horseman figure is that it's pretty much what I expected in that it is a very high quality. The sculpting, uh, the accessories, the wired cape, it's great. Um, the four horsemen always produce high quality figures, so no surprises there. I knew what to expect for articulation and everything. The horse, you know, if you care for horses, is pretty much perfect. The sculpting, all that, really great. Um, the extra mane, you know, to give you that option is really cool. Even though, I don't know, I'll probably just stick with the uh, kind of flat mane for my display. Um, I'm not sure about the cape. I probably should have spent a little bit more time with this before I started the review. So I could kind of really gauge how well that looks when it's attached. And if this is supposed to come off or not, which I assume it is. I assume you take that off, then you put the cape on and then that back. And that would probably hold it in place. But otherwise, the cape looks really nice. And it works quite well. The only real uh, negative I have to say about this thing is the hand here. You can see that this wrist, and it might not be the same for all the figures, but that is just way too like loose. It just rolls around, which is, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose of having that uh, little peg there. Like, sure, he's not dropping it on the ground, but, you know, that looks pretty silly. Like, he's going to dribble it like a basketball or something. So... I think they really should have made an effort to make sure that that wrist was nice and firm so that could hold that jack-o'-lantern up over his head if he wanted to. Now for me that's not a deal breaker because I will probably display this figure with the jack-o'-lantern on his neck rather than in his hand but there's probably a lot of people out there that want to display him more like this. And to be honest, like I really like this look too. Um, you know, as long as I still have the jack o' lantern in place, uh, I really kind of think he looks extra creepy with that like decapitated head there. So I, I don't know. I kind of like this look. But if I was torn, this is probably the deciding factor um, that I'm going to choose to display him with the pumpkin actually on his head, just because I don't want to deal with this all the time. So last thing before I go, um, as I said, I've always been a fan of this character. So when the uh, Tim Burton movie came out 20 years ago, um, there were some action figures that came out in that line from McFarlane Toys. And of course, I picked up the Headless Horseman. So here he is. And, uh, you know, these guys are actually pretty much to scale with one another. So you could display them together. You could have a little Headless Horseman battle, I suppose, between the two of them. Uh, you see this guy came with an axe. Um, I'm not sure actually what the, is the more accurate, should the Headless Horseman have an axe or a sword? I don't know. Maybe both. Um, back then when this figure came out, there actually were two options. You could get the single carded horseman, which is what I went with, or you could get the horseman with his horse. Um, and the horse came with a whole little like kind of tree diorama. And, uh, I just really wasn't a fan of the whole diorama because it, it made it feel more like a statue. I don't imagine the horse was very well articulated because none of McFarlane's figures were very well articulated back then. So I wanted this figure so that I had the horseman in an actual standing pose. I think that if I bought the other version, his legs would have been, you know, 
all wide so he could ride the horse and then they probably couldn't have been adjusted so he probably couldn't stand on his own without the horse so i went with this version it looks pretty cool but if i had to compare the two i think the new one uh is far superior not only does it you know have the articulation like this guy you'll notice there's no knee articulation the only articulation in the leg is weirdly at the top of the boot which you know isn't really a natural point of articulation um and this guy's just so much duller looking like the colors are just very flat and then of course you have the uh the flimsy soft good cape which is nowhere near as cool as the wired cape there so uh, i think it's cool that i have these guys for comparison um this guy has a bunch of cool accessories which um that might give him the edge a little bit in that he had a head um, of Christopher Walken, which is what the character in the movie looked like before he lost his head. He also came with a skull head. And you see the way his hand is sculpted there, kind of awkwardly. That's because he came with two decapitated heads that he would hold in his hand. So that was really cool. Um, I still have all that stuff, but I didn't feel like digging out the accessories right now. Um, and while we're at it, I figured I might as well bring out old Ichabod Crane. So from the McFarlane line again, I've got my Johnny Depp Ichabod. And this was a pretty cool figure. It's a pretty good likeness. Again, it's very rigid. Like you see, there's no uh, articulation in the knees or anything. So, yeah, you can't do much with him. His arm is posed like this. You know, there's no elbow articulation. So it's pretty limited. But he also came with a ton of cool accessories. He's got his whole, like, bag for investigating, which was full of all kinds of little trinkets. He had those weird little goggles that he wore during the movie when he was investigating. Uh, it's a really cool figure. And these figures haven't been on display for me for quite a few years. They've been in a storage bin. And uh, I don't see any reason really to break out this Headless Horseman again. He's probably going to go right back into storage. But once I get this guy sorted out and displayed in my uh, my Detolf glass cabinets, uh, I could see myself maybe displaying Ichabod Crane next to him. Just to kind of complete the set. I think these guys, they look good together. They don't look like wildly different like they're from completely different lines or anything i think it kind of works so uh that's another plus about this figure is that it's kind of given some life back to an old figure of mine so i thought i was done after i finished filming i continued messing around with the figure to try and figure out how the cape goes on and everything and now that i've got the cape off i kind of figured i might as well show you it so this is a little bit more of a complete review so there you go i got the uh the stump out and from there you'll see there was just another hole in the back which is how the uh, the collar piece attached so that just goes in there like so so if we want to attach the cape properly i imagine we keep the chain somewhere like that and then we put this piece in on top of it and now the chain oops, is sitting underneath of the uh the tie i guess so i think that's probably how it is supposed to to attach. Now, uh, also, I went into my spare parts bin there, and I thought we should try something out. So, I have a couple of spare parts. I have lots of spare parts actually in my like Mythic Legions bag, including some extra heads. So, I thought maybe I would try with this skull head with articulated jaw and see how that looks on here, because that might give us a pretty cool look. Uh, I, all the Mythic Legions should have interchangeable neck joints. So there you go. There is our Headless Horseman with a skull head, so that's pretty cool. Or how about a Skeletor head? Now there's a pretty cool look with a black helmet. Here's another cool helmeted head, and I even found an axe for him as well. And in case you're wondering if heads from other brands of figures will work, um, maybe some of them will, but Marvel Legends don't seem to, as this Spider-Man head is uh, much too small. You can see that the hole doesn't match up with the size of the peg. This Iron Man has the same problem. And very last thing, I promise, since I was in my spare parts bin digging around anyway, I pulled out my McFarlane accessories. So you see here the Headless Horseman with his skull head. There's the extra heads that he carries around with him. Here is his optional Christopher Walken head with Johnny Depp, Ichabod Crane. You see here he's got those crazy glasses that he wears when he's doing his investigations. Um, he's got a bunch of cool little gadgets. I pulled out a couple of those. 
and they fit inside of his bag which is really cool it's got a little uh little metal chain on there the sides open up where you can store his tools and the bag opens up like so and then you can pull out his gadgets here his little like potions and what have you um just a really really cool accessory and this has nothing to do with this figure that i'm showing you today but how often do i get to talk about old mcfarland figures from uh, you know 20 years ago so so that was my review of four horsemen studios headless horseman action figure um i hope you enjoyed it if you did please make sure to hit the like button hit the subscribe button and also leave me comments below uh it's always very much appreciated you know tell your friends about this channel you know it always it helps the channel grow the more that you like subscribe comment all that sort of stuff uh it's all really appreciated and very helpful so uh, anyway do that stuff and then i will see you soon with another video uh, I think my buddy Chad is coming over uh, in like two days and we're going to shoot another video. So uh, yeah, we'll be back with some more stuff. We'll be telling you about a toy show that we went to last weekend. Uh, yeah, lots of good, lots of good stuff. So I'll see you then. Until then. Ciao.